<laughs> no, go, go. My cat was just Everyone is live. Thank you, guys. Welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A, the Ubiports Foundation show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. My name is Dalton, and joining me this week are Florian. Hello. And Marius. Hey. Oh, now he's not good. <laughs> of course. He interrupts the beginning. My, my, now he's gone. Yeah, my internet. You know, <laughs> my internet. OK. I'm here. Hello. Hello. We're alive. Yes. Hello, Advocatux. I see you. Hello, Sesh Penguin. OK. So one month after our last time, we're back. And I do remember very clearly saying we'll be back in two weeks at the end. Um, that was wrong. So that's good. Um, Marius did post a forum thread saying why we weren't um, around at the time. I'm going to post that in YouTube live chat now if I could copy text. There we go. Um, just so that anyone who wants can read that. It's a post titled uh, Fall Entry in the Development Road, the development update for April. So that's kind of why also things have been a little bit quieter. There's just been, for a lot of the big contributors to Ubuntu Touch, it's just not been a very good month. So that's why that's happening. Thank you all for understanding. But let's get into the real meat of this show. One other thing we want to mention before we get started, uh, we're going to be at UbuCon in Spain. Well, I'm not, but these two are. Hopefully. Well, sorry to say, I already have to 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 uh, say I'm, I have to had to cancel my uh, preparations, unfortunately, um, because the uh, main reason is there will be probably again one business trip for me around this time, and my company is not able to really schedule what I'm going to do when. So um, I'm really more or less on standby around this weekend. So even if I would sit at home and doing nothing, um, I cannot really say, OK, I can confirm. So it was not clear until the last uh, one or two weeks. But uh, now it's pretty clear that um, I will not be there. Anyway, um, I will try to follow as much as possible what's going on there. And maybe one or two things can be recorded. And um, I'm even planning maybe to invite a few people here in Vienna to a local meet and greet around this time. So maybe we can celebrate the uh, Ubicon uh, with a local meetup. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's unfortunately my part. But there are another uh, bunch of people going there, actually. So um, anyone who will be there, please try to meet all of them and shake hands and Maybe one or two stickers will be there for you, <laughs> for example. I did just post that link in the YouTube chat. It is on the 27th, 28th, and 29th of April, which I suppose yes. means that we will not have a QA that weekend either. Q and A. Maybe we'll have a live well, one. Unless I could, yeah, you could, could make a live, live one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is we live. We do it live anyway. But yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but hopefully I will be there. Um, since there has been some unexpected things happening. Um, last week, I, I got the message that one of my closest family members, at least the one that I'm really close to and actually living with this person, uh, got li liver cancer. So um, at this point, it's uh, a tough time for me. So um, hopefully, I will be there. Um, but at right now, I, I can't promise. And yes, I have an XPS. <laughs> you can tell by the camera angle. Just answering that one. Yeah, the camera angle. I can do this, and it's normal. But then I have to hold the laptop. Uh, you got some books around? <laughs> well, it, it's like a half a meter up. Oh. Yeah, well, no, that's I'm not, not that work. tall. Anyway. So we hope that everything goes well for you in the next couple of weeks, Marius, and beyond. Because that's certainly not easy to deal with. Yeah, I'm at least happy to say that it it was not as bad as we initially thought, and it's it's an early stage. And uh, we live in Norway, which is the country with <laughs> free healthcare. Go and ahead, 
<laughs> well, it also also that uh, Norway is the the leading country in, in cancer research and everything. Uh, so there's a lot of things going around that I'm hoping for, but it is really serious. Um, liver cancer is not really the easiest thing. No. So, so kind of expecting both, I guess. Hmm. Well, thanks for letting us know. Uh, honestly, I didn't expect that you need to do that, but whatever nope. you're comfortable with. Yeah, I, I think it's it's fine at least to, to talk about it. It's something that um, I feel like at least everyone will go through in their lifetime. Um, and for me to share it also, I, I might help someone else that's going through this at the same time. Uh, and also in the future, um, but I, I know if you have this, uh, I know it's hard. And if you're going through this, I know it's hard. But uh, it will always be better in the end. That's that's uh, that's my motivation. Well, at least I'm happy and uh, I'm motivated that we. Marius's through... motivational speeches. Yeah, we could monetize that. <laughs> Oh no, we're not monetizing that. Mon yeah. <laughs> okay. Pay, pay Questions. for motivation. Pain. <laughs> no, please, please don't let us sell the smiles of Marius. This is really not what we're aiming for. I think we have good, good other options for merchandise in the future. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, even if people would pay for it, maybe I could imagine, but <laughs> it's maybe. Yeah. Not the best way to monetize UV ports just with our smiles. Uh, that would, wouldn't sustain it. Wouldn't be sustainable, maybe. Jan, we get into some questions. Smile, smile. Jan, smile. We could sell this one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I have said this like before, Euro. and everyone, okay. I don't know what it is, but if we put Jan in the thumbnail of a Q and A, we have significantly more viewers this. on the video. <laughs> This is actually true. <laughs> I, is I true. don't know what it is with it. It might be that he's German, so he's attracting the Germans. Uh, but this I don't know. <laughs> One of the words in that sentence was probably it. <laughs> OK. I see Flo is laughing, but he's muted, so we can't hear oh, him. Um, I don't want to, to overdub everybody with my laughing, but uh, yes. Maybe it's true. <laughs> Maybe it's the, the German attraction. <laughs> the German attraction. Okay, let's get to the topic of a. The, the, let's go on. Um, so Shall let's we? actually start with what what has been happening in the last days. What have you been doing, Dalton? Well, I have posted a wonderful, uh, smashing my microphone with my hands, uh, standard for Hallium boot. Um, the Hallium boot system kind of deal before we ever hit the root of S and in it runs. And these are all some very boring words. Basically it should better define what you need to expect as a distribution maintainer for Hallium and what the Hallium teams can better expect as well for what they need to make. It is under review right now. Uh, it's at, Hollyum's docs repository. I'm not going to try to post it in live chat because YouTube keeps screwing up my links, but uh, it is pull request 77 on the Hollyum docs repository. We can probably put that in the show notes, huh? Yeah. Uh, I am looking for a lot of reviews on that. So if any of you, um, I don't know if anyone watching would be a Hollyum maintainer, uh, distribution maintainer, but if you have you know, any comments on the grammar or the spelling or anything in the document, I would really appreciate your help with that. Oh, wow, there are two reviews now. There were no reviews last time I looked. Someone doesn't cool. have a notification and so on. I... <laughs> Seems get... spot on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Mario, Flo. do I need to ask what you've been working on? Oh, oh yeah. Me? Yeah? I have uh, kind of fixed Unity 8 in some sort. Um, that's, that's what a I'm loaded state. What have you actually fixed? 
I fixed it that you actually can run most of the applications since now they all run on the Qt Wayland, which is actually kind of awesome that it works so great. Uh, the Unity 8 session still runs on a Qt Mirror, uh, but this means that we can can mostly deprecate Qt Ubuntu and the Qt Ubuntu stuff, which means um, we can go more and more upstream. Uh, all the apps works perfectly. We can use even use Qt Web Engine right now, which is also quite awesome. Um, the Falcom web browser, for example, works really really nice. Um, also, GTK applications works natively on on uh, on Wayland. It's also kind of amazing. Uh, I've also been been starting on some Wayland stuff. Uh, no. So X Wayland okay. stuff, X Wayland stuff. So the way to run X11 apps on top of Wayland, uh, that's Which gonna be... be at least more maintained than X Mir is right now. Yes, definitely. Uh, and at the same time, it also will will not be as funky as the method that was or still is, like Libertine and all these things. Uh, where we just will have a, a straightforward socket that will always be running, and when our application requested socket, it will then forward and fork a new X Wayland uh, thread, um, and this will all be handled inside Mir, which is really awesome. Uh, we have um, uh, contact with the Mir team and everything. I was even in the Mir meeting about this. Uh, and I have initiatives, um, and then hopefully in later stage, the mirror team will will take over. So and I do uh, remember that he was that. What? Oh. oh, do you want to continue on the Wayland uh, X X eleven stuff? Well, I kind of or was. I... Um, I remember that Alan said that he had worked with your running mirror on Wayland driver a bit. What it, my, my internet died. Uh, say that again. <laughs> uh, Alan said that he had worked with your mirror on Wayland driver a bit. Did you, anything happen from that? Ah, uh, I don't know. I didn't really. Uh, I I didn't test that much because mm -hmm. that was also in the middle of of everything. everything yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, no, I haven't really tested it. Uh, I I he said that it 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 worked. I. I would say that with a really grain of salt because I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, I but think I he think said he it said built. it worked. Uh, I think he said it built. I think he said it built, and it worked with uh, the basic buffers, but it didn't work with n hardware buffers, and that's the same result which I had back when I started it. So, um, uh, but I, I... A, for the people who aren't following, that is a project to run the Mir server on top of a Wayland. Protocol is it a host? Is it a server? Because it's not really. They, a... they call it a server. They call okay. it a server, or okay. a compositor actually. Is that? Uh, mirror server on a Wayland compositor yeah. with the Wayland drivers. So, yeah, kind of a neat project. I don't know if I'd be able to find it right now to link it in the show notes, but it's yeah. in uh, GitHub.com/slash/mirror-server, and you will find it there inside a the group. Okay. That's Mario's the walking URL. <laughs> I didn't follow the all URL. I think it. I, I can't remember. I think it's yeah. mere mere platform mere dash platform dash Wayland. I'm not hundred percent sure, but it's um, in there. Speaking of that, GitHub. Um, I'm really impressed that now we have already 359 repositories on GitHub on our U reports organization. So oh, yeah. um, we are forking and forking, and uh, I get all these uh, messages when there is a new repository being created. Um, I also did one more uh, last week or so. But actually, 359 repositories is a huge code base already. Mm -hmm. that and is. Um, I must say, um, everybody's doing a great job because, um, uh, yeah, there's overwhelming amount of code already that we have to somehow deal with, not not on, uh, with everything at the same time, but um, a lot of small bits and pieces that uh, come together now. Especially a lot of when it is yeah. the old Android stuff too. So yes, sure. Yeah. But um, at least for the for the Unity things, um, I think this is also a huge amount of repositories and 
to keep an overview. So I'm really impressed that Marius knows what he's doing with all these repositories. I'm, I really lost completely what's going on there. Yeah. <laughs> to be a funny story. Uh, oh. oh, what happened? Marius, that sentence was very long. Continue. Say again. What did I say? I'm not I sure. I said that it... I don't have. Oh, I don't. St I, st I just agree with, with Florian there that I don't even have a fully control over the, the repository because some of them are actually stuck from ooh, three years back now. Is it three years since I started this? Yeah. Three years back, which is actually just information, and some of them are actually um, old some kernels of them are old and bug stuff. Trackers which we, and, yeah. yeah. Which we can probably remove at this stuff, uh, <laughs> but it's probably like. Probably like 10 of those, so we still will have like 350, 40. Yep. I suppose that's a good transition into Flo. What have you been working on the past month? Oh, yeah. Um, while I was still in, in my business trip in Spain, um, I tried to um, to make a few hacks. I will we'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, but uh, I also tried again to fix a little bit our translation stuff because we still had issues on the translations with the Webblade server that uh, it would conflict itself and the automatic uh, updates from the translators going into the GitHub repositories, it was not working very smoothly. So for the core apps, it seems to work now rather fine. That means uh, translators for the core apps should be able to get the translations much faster into uh, the repositories. And then if somebody builds the code, it will include uh, the new translations. Uh, we tried then to move this over to the docs, to the document page. And on the document page, it's again not working. Of course, guess what? Uh, um, yeah. So the document page is now in semi-automatic, semi-manual update of the translations. I'm still a little bit behind with the last uh, merge commit and fixing all the merge conflict stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm on this with Dalton. So our focus is a little bit to get the translations now done, let's say, efficiently automated so that we don't have to worry for this all the time. It would be great. Uh, it's still not 100% finished, but I think the translators have already seen that we, we pushed a few updates now and it starts rolling slowly but steadily. Yeah. Um, what is the difference? Why it does work for the core apps? It doesn't work so f so nicely for the, for the documents. Is that uh, read the docs uh, specifically handles the translation files in a different way, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, Sphinx is really weird with translations. Yeah. Um, if anyone has worked with large Sphinx projects and had to translate them before, we're specifically using read the docs, but it's pretty standard stuff. Um, if you've gotten a good way that you go through that with Weblate, I know that a lot of people are using TransFX successfully for that, but that's not us. Um, just let us know because I really, I don't know where to go from here. Um, yeah. Because what Sphinx does is it directly updates its PO files. Um, and that's really not what we want. We'd rather have a POM file or a POT, sorry, POT, POT yeah. file that is the template. And then WebLate can do whatever it wants from there. It really doesn't like it when you touch things. WebLate no, likes to be the only one touching. That's the point. And it's also clear because Weblet has its own database and we do not want to have lots of micro commits for every letter being changed. It shouldn't make a pull request or commit on our code base. Rather, Weblet is collecting the updates from the translators. And then once a week, there is a job that should commit all the things to, to GitHub. But why? In, in, in the meantime, when somebody else is changing the PO files for the translation with new strings, then sometimes it can merge, of course, automatically, but it, it's really a few cases only. And mostly it conflicts everything because the PO file gets completely rewritten during this process. And it's really hard to fix this by hand because merging is then always uh, making these conflicts solved by hand. So yeah, uh, any guys who have experience with things and translations come up to us and uh, maybe we can we can get some information how to do this properly. Yeah. Maybe I will also ask the Weblet guys once more. They are quite helpful also, and it's a it's a good community over there. Yeah. Okay, so this is one part for translations. Um, playing with some hacks, um, especially guys. I'm still looking for a few better users 
Um, I will also explain a little bit later. But um, there is one. OK, should I skip this for later in detail, or should I come back to later. this one? OK, we can do it later. Uh, and then, of course, a notorious question, what's the state of Telegram? Because most people uh, asso associate me already a little bit with the Telegram app. Um, we started now, let's say, shaping a little bit the, the next version of the Telegram app. Uh, we want to keep the layout or the screens mostly stable as they are now, with some improvements, of course. So it will be not a completely a different app. But uh, the lower levels in the back end, we completely rip out. And um, what's going on there in the background? <laughs> I don't know, but I can see Marius's cat. OK, cool. I'm just continue talking. So um, we got a few, a few people more interested in the Telegram development. And hopefully, we can uh, start working on Telegram. Let's call it 3.0 Telegram app for Ubuntu Touch soon. And as usual, of course, if there is any better versions and so we will have an idea how to publish this meanwhile still unfortunately there is no news for the telegram app for 1604 because we are still not able to get qmake compile it as we want in the new container for 1604 it's really a pity and we try to do this as soon as possible but still no eta yeah that's more or less what's on my mind for the moment yeah. Well, so sh should we get on with questions then? Sure. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, just something popped quickly in my mind here. Um, I said that uh, about uh, Unity 8. There still is a small little problem. If you want to install it and you want to get around it, uh, you you need um, Mirror doesn't handle login D yet, uh, and since the Mirror Mirror stuff got removed. Uh, you need to give permission to to uh, dev TTI whatever it needs to use, and dev slash input. Uh, you need to to give permission to the user that you are trying to log in before you are trying to log into the session. You also need to to change it from a mirror session to a Wayland session. Um, these are stuff that uh, are coming up in mirror. And then uh, there's already plenty of pull requests already on this, uh, not currently functional, um, but I hope to in with next week we will have this fully functional with login D support in Mirror. I I can write a, a short uh, blog post on how to to get it working at this stage. That's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you. You read my mind. I I, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, I did just see, ooh, there's a new question. We're going to start with this one because it's nice and easy. All right. Uh, Hummelback on the forum asks, what is the name of the UbiPorts mascot? That little robot thing that is not showing anywhere right now. Uh, this guy, that guy, Yumi. that is Yumi, the robot, Y-U-M-I. Why is it called that? Because Wayne said it, and it stuck. <laughs> yeah, I like the oh, name. And uh, while I'm showing off stickers, while we're at UbuCon, we have new stickers. <gasps> so we have I the app <laughs> sticker, um, the new shiny foil. Um, I like this one. I don't know what to call it, but I like it. Device. We're going to call that the device and the um, convergence sticker. Call, call it the bling bling device because it's so shiny. It is shiny and I love it. The I don't think we're going to have any device. of these left. But if we do, please, Jan, send me some. I want them. I know. I don't think <laughs> you're listening right now, but. I love that you're begging on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I also Can have a see? sticker. People in the live chat saying I like to oh, hoard my, stickers, my, or I'm going to hoard stickers. I'm, Good. I'm trying to show up my stickers, but uh, I was using the wrong camera. It's not here anymore. The but, clock. Sorry. I have one too. It's gonna cling soon. But carry on. Yep. Let's do that. That one was easy. Uh, Gizmo Chicken on the forum asked. Um, 
And everyone, if you want us to say your real name when you ask a question, uh, you can set your you can set a full name on the forum, and I'll check your profile before we uh, throw them in the dock. Unity eight for the desktop should be the second highest priority. Basically, um, he was commenting on the post that um, Marius made, saying. I'll also add that offering Unity 8 for installation on the Bionic desktop will likely bring lots of attention to UB ports, which hopefully will translate into more potential Ubuntu Touch users. So I hope that Unity 8 on the Bionic desktop won't lag too far behind Xenial on the phone. Well, it sounds like with what Mario is doing it right now, it's going to be their first, but you know. <laughs> well, they actually have been, um, the way that I'm developing is, is because I'm developing an ARM platform, and ARM takes so long to compile sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so just in between the compile times, I do other stuff, and then I forget about going back because it's not. I don't get a message when it's done, and then I got stuck into that. And that when Mir is compiling, I go back to Senior. Uh, so it's it's a bit back and forth. Um, they are still Unity is still second priority, um, but second priority doesn't mean that it will lag behind. Uh, second priority means that it will just not get as much attention. I'll just do that. Okay. That all answered. Flo, do you have anything to add to that? Um, not in particular. I'm just I'm just thinking that it's time for me also to try to install Unidate on the desktop, which means our Unidate to to join the the crew of testers. And uh, maybe you can mention also that, uh, of course, we are still uh, loving to hear feedback on, on this installing of uh, Unity 8. Um, because I think that on the QA group, it's uh, pretty silent about this. So maybe those testers are just testing on the mobile devices, which is absolutely fine. But we cannot have enough testers. So please join us, uh, ask us, and step up with uh, any feedback, testing, bug reports, and so on. And um, yeah, to just um, make it st as stable as possible or as super stable. Uh, because I'm expecting for Bionic still that uh, we will have this or that issues maybe. Yeah. We never know how upstream canonical things are going in which way. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, testing, testing, testing. That would be nice. Yeah. Stefano on our forum uh, uh, said, asked, stated, uh, Marius said on his Pro 5 that he is able to use Anbox and the mobile network. However, when I use the Anbox installer, as soon as it's installed, it disables my mobile connection. Marius, do you have that behavior, or did you? Uh, that behavior was fixed with uh, the newer kernel uh, that has the, the, split, uh, the split binder. Since it couldn't co-work with the existing binder, binder because... I don't know, um, but that means that uh, you still have to, to recompile the, the kernel a bit. Uh, the source is up on GitHub, uh, and it should be available on CD image. Um, but you need to update the the need to the newest kernel. Um, there's no new installer uh, as of now. There is a an improvement, a good solid improvement to the installer. Uh, mostly that it's. Um, allows you to, to install apps and everything. Uh, but that is still a bit, uh, it, it's still unfinished um, because Senior has, has taken the priority. Um, and the way that we, we stated back then was we said that we want to to have a stable stable branch to work on. Um, and I know that uh, Antbox has been uh, postponed a little bit. Uh, that's both due to difficulties in everyone's personal life at some point. Um, and now, especially me for the last couple of, a, a month at least. Yeah. Um, which means that, that everything slows a little bit down. Uh, I have been working on Anbox from time to time. Uh, I do use Anbox on my daily driver uh, just to test it around. Um, so it is, it is there and it's still in development. Um, it's just that is going really slowly uh, because we have Unity 8, Senior, and Anbox, uh, which means that things go a little bit slower.
but the good things will come to those who wait. So I think to actually answer your question, Stefano, we might have an old link on the docs that you've used um, to get the wrong kernel. Um, we can update that, and I'll make sure that that's all updated after we're finished here. OK? Yeah, if not, you have to, uh, to ping me to make sure that I used the correct link to update next time. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I placed <laughs> folders. There are so many folders. Uh, OK. We have a couple of questions about the browser. Wendigo asked, I heard that the browser was updated. Does it support WebAssembly? We were talking a while ago about no. updating Oxide to a newer version of Chromium. I don't think that that's actually happened, though. Uh, WebAssembly does not work as far as I have tested. Um, I probably won't until we update to, to Qt Web Engine. Um, I don't know if this is a set of enablements to do or if this is just purely because it's how it's implemented. Uh, I'm not really deep into to the Oxide or Chromium set of stuff. Um, so these are also harder areas since the code base is just super huge. Um, but uh, so this is still a, a little bit unknown. Um, but the testers that I have been running uh, does not show that it works. Uh, but of course, you can try it on your, your device and see if it works on that one with the newer Oxide we have now because I, I tested this a, a while back. Uh, I think when we had 1.18, I think we had 21 now, 21. Uh, so it might have become between those two versions, but honestly, I don't know. But on the topic of web browsers, um, if someone wants to try a new web browser on a bunch of touch with using the Qt WebKit, the newest reborn Qt WebKit, you can try it. It's on my GitHub. Uh, shameless plug there, but I will I will post the, the link to that. OK, yeah, it's just put it in the shared doc, which you're not currently viewing. <laughs> Up next, well, actually, that answers the next question, which was, uh, from Lionel, is there anything new in the browser, such as Qt Web Engine or Qt Web Kit? Not currently in the official Qt, Ubuntu Qt Touch Kit browser. Works. Uh, OK. Qt Web Engine doesn't work, but Qt Web Kit works right now. Qt Web Engine doesn't support Mirror. That's mm. what I want to say. So which one is more recently maintained? What? Are they both just? separate projects going in parallel? Uh, so the history with that is that Qt okay. WebKit was the first, the first, uh, the first browser. And uh, then um, in 2015, I think it was, uh, my numbers might be a bit off, but in 2015-ish, uh, they switched over to using the Chromium base instead of the WebKit base, uh, which they said that they would deprecate uh, the Qt WebKit uh, but that someone comes along now in 2017 and start of the 2017 to say, hey, we want to reborn Qt WebKit uh, because we want something that's not Chromium based, which I fully agree on that. Uh, everything is everything embedded at this point is just Chromium, Chromium, Chromium. Uh, so that is it's a it's a reborn project. Uh, that's also why I made an experimental browser for it just to to see how it performs because it uses the newest Qt WebKit, uh, the, the newest WebKit, which is not really that far off of being uh, f from uh, f from Chromium. Apple has done a lot of work on, on Qt WebKit. Not on Qt, but on that, WebKit. I think that answers the question. Yeah. Kaye asked, has anyone talked to Open Whisper Systems? There is a maintained. Uh, signal app now. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so the good news is, um, the, I just assume what is the question all about. Uh, if we have talked to Open Whisper Systems, how to cooperate better uh, in getting the signal app up to 
let's say, feature parity with the official apps or if we can get push notifications and such. So first of all, the good news is to all people who want to use uh, Signal, um, the Signal app is actually uh, now maintained by a guy um, that uh, completely took over the existing code and made already some improvements. It's not crashing any longer and so on. It's, work it's working quite well. Um, the, however, if you're uh, using the old app um, you and you're switching to the new one, it has a different namespace. That means you would have to migrate uh, your settings and your chats to the new app. So it's not a drop-in replacement. Um, he decided to change the, the ownership and the namespace of the app, So, which is basically a good thing because um, the old maintainer doesn't maintain it anymore. So it's in the hand of a new uh, maintainer. You can do it like this. But then, of course, due to the confinement, um, those new uh, this new app doesn't have access to the settings and the chats and so on of the old app. Um, in this case, um, there is a small explanation on the GitHub page how to do this correctly uh, without losing the old chats and the keys and uh, even the data, even the media can be imported. Um, so um, probably it would be a good idea uh, that I ask him to put it also in the forum, a small how-to. And um, then, of course, also here, um, please, uh, guys, just install the Signal app, start to use it, and give feedback if it's how it's working. However, talking about Open Whisper systems is, um, let's say, the state is the following. Yes, we are in contact with them. Uh, we are negotiating a little bit about the push notifications. I have no answer about my last proposal. The last proposal was, since uh, all the all the code from the server side is also published on GitHub. And I took already a look inside. It would even be possible for us to implement the necessary parts for the push notifications directly into their repositories and just make a pull request for them and they accept it or not. Uh, so there is no work on their side. Um, we could do it on, on, on our side completely. Uh, so there is no argument from Open Whisper to say they don't have the time or don't have resources for us to, to make push notifications possible. However, it's under uh, under negotiation. Um, I will come back to this uh, as soon as I have some update. Um, but it could be, I see rather uh, good chances that we can realize the pushes for Signal. Um, and then on the, the, the last comment for that is, um, there are some features missing in the app, but um, I think his name is Aaron, if I'm not wrong. Uh, he's working on this and uh, will come up with new features. So Signal App has a new maintainer and um, I think we are, we are pretty positive about this. Yeah, so it's an alternative for all the guys who cannot use Telegram or don't want to use it and uh, or they want to uh, test an alternative. Um, I think we're on a good way. Yep. And I did really like Tech Secure while I was using it on Android. So, yeah, and it's uh, <clears throat> actually um, it's maybe not so funky or fancy like Telegram with all these uh, functions that you have and with bots and blah blah blah. But uh, it's rock solid. It's a messenger. It does exactly what it says. It delivers messages from person A to B. It it's completely encrypted. Um, and yes, so. I would say we, we really can propose this uh, as, a, as a good, secure alternative. Yeah, that's, I think maybe this was behind the question. So yes, um, we are still talking with them. I still don't have any full answers, but let's see. Seamus asked in our Telegram group, how is progress going with launching Libertine apps on 1604? Flo, I believe you put this in the doc. I put it in the doc. I just copied from Supergroup, but uh, I cannot answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I do yeah. see that there is some troubleshooting going on in the group right now. It might have been a the container was old or something like that. Um, as far as we know, Libertine should function. But if it doesn't, please file a bug so that we know. <laughs> basically yeah i think there are already some bugs inside so the first rule always here is please have a look if there is already a bug inside 
because in the last weeks we got uh, quite a lot of duplicates for existing problems. Seems that our uh, issue database is filling up and so the people don't see that they even on page 24 or so there is still um, a bug that is exactly what they are experiencing. So uh, please make a short uh, query on GitHub on the issues page if you find something that's similar to what you're trying to file. Uh, it makes our lives easier if we don't have to uh, process the duplicates. Uh, that would be right. nice. And the most we'll tell you is if your issue is significantly different, just please file a new one. It won't be yeah. a big deal. And then also there are there are sub trackers for the core apps. Uh, while not uh, really essentially necessary, if you're unsure where to file it, you can always put it into uh, the Ubuntu Touch um, tracker. And we will then move it over to a, to an app tracker if necessary. But there are uh, separate trackers for uh, the core apps. And they are basically uh, github.com slash uaboard slash, for example, weather minus app or clock minus app and so on. So you can also file directly there. If you're sure the bug is only affecting this app or it's inside an app, it makes our life also a little bit easier because we don't have to move it over from Ubuntu Touch repository. Yes, bug hunting. Well, um, I hope it answers his question about the libertine, but they are still talking. I think they are busy with resolving it online. That's very nice that we can uh, maybe fix something during the Q&A. <laughs> and even it's a, it, the community is fixing this for us. Like Rodney, hello Rodney, thanks for fixing so many things for us. <laughs> Rodney is online 24 seven sometimes, I think. It's really interesting. I don't know if he sleeps. No, I, he never sleeps. Oh. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> but he doesn't fix the Fairphone. No, he didn't fix the Fairphone. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is a song for anyone who doesn't know. I don't know where to find it, and I don't really want to. No, Someone no, we are, we're not. Of Marius. We, we don't get sidetracked now. Shout out to Rodney. Yes, and uh, oops. Marius no, seemed to have stepped on his cable. Or well, can't. that's okay because this is Flo's time to steal the show. Okay, shall we? Shall I steal the show? No, I'm not. I'm just stealing the last minutes of the show. So, um, as I said in the beginning, I was uh, looking into some uh, experimental improvements, let's call it, or simply hacks that uh, can make the life easier or not, depends. Um, but um, I saw that uh, during my usage, especially of the OnePlus One in the last uh, few, let's say two months or so, um, if you use a device yourself on a daily driver based and you um, want to have all the features from time to time, you want to copy some files, for example, and it may, made, made me really scratch my head um, what's going on with the MTP uh, problem on the OnePlus One, and then some user on the forum, and I'm really uh, sorry, but I don't can I cannot um, give proper credits now. I think um, came up with a solution that it's only a permissions issue. So uh, I hacked this into a small description how to fix the MTP permissions on the OnePlus One, and put this on the support uh, forum category. Uh, I also put there a small hack uh, how to. Uh, flash new firmware for the N5 and for the Fairphone. And I'm still looking for Fairphone users who are willing to flash the latest firmware and tell me if they if they see an improvement or not. Yeah. Because it's very, um, it's, it's, it's not very, it's easy to, to detect if it's really making a difference, but I think it does. So I'm shouting out any Fairphone users, there is a thread about this. And now comes the idea that uh, when I was talking with Dalton about this, um, maybe it will be just a special category in the forum where I can publish uh, those hacks and uh, small how-tos or improvements. Please, for... please tell yes. everyone what we were going to call it. Yes, and now comes now comes the special thing. It will be called Flow Hacks. Yeah, unbelievable, huh? How <laughs> Dalton is dying. One oh, that's so steps. cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. Uh, flow hacks. So um, even if it's maybe silly um, that I get my own forum tag for these for this, um, descriptions, but you can always find it much easier 
if you want to know what what I'm what I'm trying to do with the phone, then just looking look for flow hacks. Yeah. For context, Florian's username is flowhack. Yes, sorry for that. My username is flowhack. So, uh, isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! No, I'm a shy guy normally. So. Flow hacks initially starts, as I said, with these two firmware guides with the uh, MTP uh, permission fix for the for the OPPO. Dalton, keep focused. <laughs> and now, now comes the special flow hack. Um, there is one actually where I need even more feedback. <laughs> um, I wanted to make a simulated Miracast sync so that the people can try if the convergence works. Um, with Miracast on their phones. Unfortunately, this is completely work in progress and I cannot try it on my laptop because you need a special Wi-Fi card for this. Uh, Miracast seems to be a little bit pain in the ass. Um, so I got one feedback from a user that were, was able to follow my steps, but then it failed to connect. Um, if anyone is interested in trying this, uh, you can check your Wi-Fi card if it's fulfilling the requirements. It's also written in this guide. And uh, it would be great if we can have, uh, like for demo reasons or so, enable uh, any Linux PC as a, as a Miracast sync. There's an open source project called MiracleCast, and MiracleCast should be able to do this for you. However, if we are not successful after a few tries, then we unfortunately have to give it up again, because maybe it's not what we what we can really use, I don't know. It's an interesting combination of hardware requirements and the software, and I don't know. But I'm pretty sure Etacast is pretty based on or depending on Mir, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, um, it's probably not their fault. It's probably our fault <laughs> yes. it doesn't work. But anyway, so this is, um, let's say, something for the funny side of our hacking. Um, even if it doesn't work, we can learn something from this, maybe. I don't know. It's like a pure science, huh? you know? <laughs> <laughs> let's make an experiment with our phones. Oh, really? This is... Every developer should have a a, a tag on on a, on a forum. Yes. More, we can do that. More hacks. We... No. <laughs> I'm sorry that the coincidence is perfect for me at this at this time, but maybe we find something else. I mean, we can make tags that only one person can use. We're just not going to make that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I I'm not sure it's that's a good idea. I would probably overload because I use hacks all the time, which is... Uh, yeah. No, but for me, the, the beginning was to make a structured and uh, let's say reproducible uh, way in the documentation that other people can verify what I see or uh, they cannot verify, um, especially if it's uh, involving a lot of steps that you're easy to forget. So it's part for me, part is a kind of a notepad situation. And the other thing is really to invite people to start hacking on their phones. Because actually, that's that's what Linux was made for, that uh, you can modify and uh, or even also of course, destroy your system yourself. But um, if I post something, then um, it will not destroy your phone because normally I have tried it on my own already. So, um, yes, that's flow hacks. Perfect. I like it. Thanks Rip. for the opportunity. <laughs> Diago, oh, I'm it sorry. Does. Life Diago. Just is killing us. Crip sex. No, I don't think that will work. <laughs> 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 oh, jeez. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be sax or hacks, grips hacks, but it grips. came out great no, anyway. No, that would be grip shacks. <laughs> grip shacks. No, that's not good at all, I think. This isn't a good one. Flow hacks with X. Oh, Wayne. Hello, Wayne. Uh, no, it's not flow hacks, it's flow hacks. Oh. Let me answer this quickly. Flow X? Um, you're, go you're going out with that an axe? Yeah, sure. You can chop trees with the Ubuntu touch phone. It's no problem. It's it's really very well, multi use. Depend uh, on the tree size, I would say. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was full of okay. <laughs> I, I think you will be limited with uh, a big tree. But yes, yes, sure. We do have one more question from Live Chat if you guys are up for it. No, yes, and it's well, not about trees. 
not about trees. One, fu one funny thing anymore. If you want to cut big trees, you need to opt to the senior at least. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> you had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Marius, have you managed to fix the sound on one plus three? Community image soonish. Multiple question marks. Hmm. One plus three win. One plus three win. Yes, I have. You have? Yep. Oh. Ooh. Um, oh. A more explanation on that is that uh, we now have something. We now can build Pulse Audio model modules right. outside of Tree. Mm-hmm. So now we can build both uh, the Droid module, the Discovery module, and all those Android modules that goes into your Droid. And also we can build uh, the Audio Fling or Glue modules outside of the tree instead of needing to to go around with 400 lines, Plesky, Debian, package, Debian patches, package patches, which is a pain to maintain. Um, so this is this is good. Uh, that means that I, I just recompile it for uh, for uh, Android 7 Qualcomm build, um, and it just worked. But what about the Mirkov driver? Oh, that's another thing we've been working on. We should have put that at the top of the show. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you can um, take that one. Yeah, I can take that. So Marius was... we. Uh, I asked him, why is this cough thing so terrible? And he said, let's fix it. <laughs> this is 100% what happened. Pretty much, uh, yeah. So we have a separate set of headers that we need to build a mirror with in order to get it to actually work on a Qualcomm phone, such as this Moto G5 Plus with Android 7 and the Qualcomm drivers. Funny thing is, the Nexus 5 is not actually affected by this problem. It's affected by its own problems. <laughs> They're a little different. It's just the phone itself, I guess. Or the kernel. Actually, we did have someone else in the porting group with the same problems, so I'm thinking it's not. That's a problem for another day, though. Anyway, yeah. so we need to build Mir with this separate driver. But Mir has this little thing called platforms, where you can have separate drivers that it will load and pick from when it starts. So we have created a new platform that is specifically for that 7.1 Code Aurora driver terribleness that actually does allow the mirror server to start on Qualcomm devices. However, it stops the mirror server from starting on not Qualcomm devices because we haven't quite got that detection working yet. So we need yeah. to find some way to detect whether we're running, whether we need the cough driver or not. And that we're still figuring out, but that should bring us a little bit closer to being able to run on Holium a lot better. So the thing that we do right now is, is it's just a, a quick hack to get it working. It's just detect if it's Qualcomm at all. Um, then use the, the newer one so we don't actually interfere with MediaTek and other devices. Uh, but we, but at the same time, we haven't pushed this upstream uh, or mainstream. No. Especially so with it, the problem that we have core devices, which are Qualcomm, and it actually yeah. breaks those. Yeah. Uh, so we need to, to find a, a good way to actually detect it. There is no actually good way, so we actually need to do some uh, probably we need to do some version matching between the, the SDK versions and uh, the API levels. Uh, Live problem solving. Can <laughs> Mir do a get prop? Yes. Yes. Could we have porters set a different property? Yes. We could have porters do that. Which uh, platform they'd like to use specifically? Wait. Yeah, that, that's fine. A porter can do that, but uh, let's try to avoid that. It needs to be okay. automatic. Okay. Not problem solving online. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this is this is um, but this is also not uh, oh. only. Oh, your clock. Uh, my clock will 
also ring in a minute. Uh, but uh, where was I? This is only not only good news for for um, for only Holium devices. Uh, this is also good news for for our existing devices, which means that we can easily upgrade them if necessarily. Uh, and also, it's uh, the major benefit is that we can run the same uh, the same uh, root FS or file system on all devices. And in the end, we want to include run the exact same root file system on both the desktop and mobile. That's our ultimate goal, uh, and we are pretty close. And that that the uh, Pulse Audio is what made me think of that, because we need to ship a separate Pulse Audio module as well, because Qualcomm broke that too. Yeah. But that's what the discovery module is. Uh, so the discovery module is kind of the same as the what the mirror platform does, where it switches between the versions, uh, depending on the FDK version of Android. Um, but it still gets back to the problem to detect non cough or cough. Right, because because Qualcomm. this and let me pick it up in my hand. There we are. This are the same. Android SDK version, so you can't tell the difference between them. Um, that's going to be interesting. If yeah. anyone knows, does Qualcomm set a property? <laughs> like, did they say this is the separate? I, I don't know. We need to figure this out. Some things. We'll figure it out someday. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hey. He just, Alan, Alan just popped in to give us his, some hints. Hello, Alan. Maybe. Hi, Alan. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, we can do this to, to also test, uh, if you want to test uh, the non-cough one on a non-cough device, you can actually force it, as he says. Uh, oh, I might have to So do we that. can we can actually can actually do that. Um, but the, the alternative method would also be, as you said, with, uh, with get prop. Uh, if he doesn't find a way to to properly detect cough, uh, if not, that actually might also be a solution we want to use. Um, but I, I, one of the things that I also want to to keep away from from having config files for each device. I think that's a. Uh, I think it would be better to have automatic detection, in my opinion. Um, but of course, if it can't be done it can't be done uh, then we have to blame Qualcomm again uh, <laughs> that's easy they're a big company you can just blame them they yeah care. like someone that puts uh, something in the middle of an enum um, but um, yeah we will find a solution for this uh, and it's also something we we also have on a back burner and low priority because it's still needs a solid base, which is senior, and it's solid in the base, but it's not solid for the user, I guess, yet. Um, everyone, so we have a couple of questions on this. I did pick up the Nexus 5X. Someone asked, Do, will we soon have Ubuntu Touch on the Nexus 5X? Yes, if someone fixes the problems that I can't seem to fix. <laughs> There's a really nice GIF floating around somewhere. Uh, if you find it, the GitHub issue that shows the scopes uh, flying in, crashing, flying in, crashing repeatedly on the login screen while the keyboard is a white box showing at the bottom of the screen. Now, but you you didn't make yourself very clear because users were thinking this is now a GIF support uh, for the dash. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> animated, sorry, animated GIF support for the dash. <laughs> On the login screen. Yes. On the, no, of course. Take your GIF with you everywhere. No need to close them. We're not doing that. <laughs> but it has the cost that you can't even call with the phone anymore. So. Uh, the other question, was there any roadmap for that Holium stuff when it gets done? Um, yeah. 1604 on the core devices is still kind of the highest priority of all the things. But when other things are compiling, we do mess with. <laughs> yeah, the device. It, it, that's uh, that's the thing with with 
well, I, I'm not sure if it's a positive thing, but it's a, it's a thing with, with ARM that you get a lot of more time to do other stuff while it's compiling. Uh, <laughs> th this is why I just want to have a ARM workstation and just get over with it, stop using Intel uh, or AMD, um, but it's not as easy. <laughs> Someone needs no... to get on that, seriously. Yeah. Someone needs can, to fix it. Can a... we buy an ARM64 workstation with ARM HF compatibility that actually works? That would be nice. That would be awesome. Um, and just run, and it, it, they also have to run the mailing kernel, uh, of course. We can't have the Android kernels, which are four years behind. And that's not even it's, kidding. They are four it's years. It's only behind. a few now. I mean, 4.4 and 4.9 are out. Anyway. Yeah. Any, oh. Okay, yep, one more question. We do get a lot of questions like this, so that's why I will allow it. Um, what about the Xperia X or any Xperia device? Oop, uh, I'll put that phone down so it doesn't make any more noise. Um, if you want to see support for your device, you will want to go to our documentation and check out our porting guide, which I do need to update since there is a bit of a nice change thing that uh, someone actually yelled at me to change it this morning, but <laughs> that's where you'll want to start. We are not able to port to that many devices. I have these because uh, they ha have strategic value, basically. Not particularly in having a port made for them, but in all the problems that I find and yell at Marius to help me with while, <laughs> while I'm porting. And also at the same time, uh, they're good good devices for for initial Holium development because there is something new and it's not something that's been done before. That way, you know the problems will appear and you need to force them yourself to fix those problems. And that's that's a great way with doing it live on a device. It doesn't necessarily be a device that you need to port, uh, but it might be a port of it in the end anyway. Uh, so don't. So, so still expect that Dalton will do a port. Uh, praise Dalton for that. Uh, but uh, it's not. That's not the the main goal. It's not really goal. the point, really. Yeah, yeah. The point it's was more to get the documentation around. Yeah, and also Holium development, boot, boot image, and and all this low level stuff uh, that kind that of no one really cares about because it just keeps working. Yeah, but everyone complains when it's not. We do this work so you don't have to care. <laughs> that's a sl that's our slogan from now on. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Basically, it's ten o'clock here in local time, which is uh, actually uh, UTC minus two hours, uh, eight o'clock UTC. This is why I say all times in UTC when we're dealing with this. Yes, there was a little bit of confusion today when we start, so. Um, we are um, globalized peoples, and um, how to say, there is only one time that can be correct for everyone on the planet, and that's UTC, of course. UTC. <laughs> <laughs> Even for us, it's it's quite still still very easy because here in Europe, it's just one or two hours before UTC in my in my time zone. But of course, in other parts of the world, you have to start calculating. Yeah, uh, and even then, most of Europe is the same time, which is now plus two. Yeah. But We're it felt it Spain. felt very weird in Spain where I've been because it's quite on the on the western part of Spain. So there in the morning, I mean, I had to get up. It was always just dark, dark, and dark. And then on the evening, oh, it was pretty long, very very light. So I can understand now that um, yeah, we should have more time zones in Europe, maybe. No, no more time zones. <laughs> 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 No. But maybe maybe we should make also a, a lateral separation. So for the people in Norway, there is another time than for the people in the south. Huh? Please oh, stop. Let's make a, let's oh, make a grid. No. Huh? No, no. Well, Please it doesn't stop. go that way. Time doesn't go up <laughs> and sideways. Okay. Hi, right, guys. I'm, Someone I'm close that. Yeah. No. Please. Time only goes sideways. No, actually, we should use Martian time. Let's stop using Earth time all together. Let's all use That's Martian good. time. That's good, yeah. I'm going to cut this here. <laughs> yes. Thank you, everyone, for watching. This was Thank the you. Touch Q&A 26.
I got the number Ooh. right for once. <laughs> is this a cat? That is a cat, indeed. We'll let you all know when we'll be live next on the forum. And you can ask your questions in the forum thread that we post. It'll always be in the general section. Anything else? If you'd like to get a hold of us in between Q&As, we have a lot of ways to do that. You can either go to our forum at forums.ubports.com. You can hit us up at at ubports on Telegram or hash ubports on Freenode. We have a Matrix channel, which is hash ubports colon matrix.org. Those are hard to say. And we also have a lot of social networks. We're on tele uh, Telegram. Telegram isn't a social network. We have Facebook, Instagram. There is a Mastodon group, but I'm not sure which server it's on anymore. It's just gotten lost in the Federation. And Twitter. And I believe that's it. Either way, links will be down in the description below. Cool. If you nice. like this, you can press the like button, and I highly recommend that. It feels good to do it. The cat says press the like button. And you can also subscribe to get more of these, though I'm not sure why you'd want to. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.